In this movie, I want to look at the crop tool in Photoshop CS6 and some of the new interface changes that have taken place. And this is one of the things that you're either going to love or you're going to hate. Personally, I've been working with the new crop tool in Photoshop CS6 uh, quite a bit and I really like the uh, new, uh, new improvements that have been made. Uh, that might have something to do with the fact that I've been working a lot with Lightroom and I quite like the way Photoshop now has a more Lightroom-like response when working with the crop tool. But also because as an author, um, when I retouch uh, screenshots that have been taken for the book, uh, I find it extremely useful now using the new crop tool uh, interface for editing uh, things like that. So let me show you the new options. Let me select the crop tool and you can see that the crop tool options bar looks slightly different now. There are some new options up there which I shall explain. But um, the most obvious thing is, is that when the crop tool is selected you can see a bounding box appear around the image and you can just uh, click on any of the handles and drag these to adjust the, uh, to adjust the bounding uh, <coughs> box for the crop. And you can see as I do this that a heads up display appears and this is common to a number of tools now in Photoshop CS6 depending on how the preferences have been uh, configured for Photoshop and these obviously give you here a, 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 an idea of the measurement uh, for the image as you make that crop. And you don't just have to drag on the handles, you can also just drag anywhere on the side of the crop to reposition it. Another thing that you'll notice over here in the layers panel is that the uh, layers view will change. So regardless of how many layers or however they're structured in the image uh, that you're working in, uh, whenever you enter into the crop mode, you'll see the crop preview uh, appear here above a white background layer. So don't worry about that. So uh, when you click OK to apply the crop, the image will revert to show you all the layers that were there originally intact. And then let's have a look at some of the options available in the crop options bar. You've got a view menu here, which allows you to change the view for the overlay that's applied within the crop bounding box. So if you prefer, you can select a grid option or a diagonal. Here's the triangle, a golden ratio, and then lastly, the golden spiral. So different overlay options that you can choose to work with if they happen to make it easier for you to judge how to apply your crop. And then next to this, then there are these options here which are included and you can see that there is also a use classic mode option with a shortcut uh, P that you can use to switch to that when you are in the crop mode. So if you really don't like the way the new crop tool is working, then don't despair, you can easily go back to working in the classic mode. Um, the other options that are, that are mentioned, uh, that are shown here, these are things which I discuss in the book. I'm just gonna keep it fairly simple and go through how to work with the tool. So I've shown you there how to just adjust the uh, handles. You can also rotate a crop just by clicking outside of the crop bounding box and rotate it clockwise or anti-clockwise. And here you uh, get an indication of uh, also how the crop tool behavior is different because you'll notice that the crop bounding box, um, the alignment of that doesn't change. It's the image underneath that changes. And this is what gives it the, as I described, the Lightroom-like type of behavior now in Photoshop. And I quite like this. So I, I find it's easier to work um, when you move the crop this way. If you want to get a precise crop in an image, you can also choose to work with the straighten tool. So for example, if you just uh, click to select the tool and then drag across the image and then release, then that can get the crop to align to the uh, line that you've just drawn using that particular tool. And then as before, you have the center, center point for the uh, bounding, uh, so for the, for the crop uh, bounding box. And if you position that to a different point in the image, then as you make a rotation, then the rotation takes place around the new position for that center point. And then also importantly up here, we have an option to delete the crop pixels, which I've got switched on at the moment. And this is important because if I was to apply the crop now, it will permanently erase all of the pixels outside of the crop bounding box that we see here. 
if I um, deselect if I deselect it, <clears throat> then that means that the pixels outside of the cropped area won't uh, be permanently cropped. And if I show you what happens now by applying the crop, I can do that by pressing the check button up here or just by pressing enter on the keyboard. You can see now that the crop has been applied to the image. But if I go to the image menu and choose reveal all, then you can see that if I just zoom out here, you can see that it's now possible to see all of the uh, image contents. Of course, I rotated the crop, so the image itself is slightly rotated there. And the areas outside of that are now uh, revealed as transparent pixels. So very useful to be aware of that using the delete crop pixels option. As to whether it's basically a, um, an option that gives you the ability to uh, undo a crop and um, not lose ever any of the uh, pixels in the original uh, image. So that concludes this brief introduction to working with the crop tool and some of the new interface changes that have taken place in Photoshop CS6. There is also another movie on this website and here I uh, give you an example of how to work with the new perspective crop tool which has been split out uh, from the standard crop tool options.